let's do this. Oh, this is uncomfortable. <laughs> Push the button. <laughs> Can you see me okay? Yep. Yay! Cool. All right. Welcome to our uh, evening D and D uh, stream for uh, Roll for Trouble. Weekly DM chats. That's a thing. Sorry, brain's gone. I don't know <laughs> how that works. Anyways, Echo. um, yeah, echoing sounds really weird. Um, so hey, everybody. My name's Susie. Uh, I play, I play Brigitte on our Saturday night games. Saturday afternoon. Oh, it's okay. Hard. Deep breath. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, tonight I'm going to help you, or me, uh, build a character. Um, when I first started playing D&D, um, my character sheets were handed to me um, by everybody else. Which is great, because then that means I didn't have to think. Uh, but as, you know, games progressed and I was like, I want to do this on my own, um, I then had to learn how to build my own characters. Um, when 4E was transitioning out the door, um, I found a very helpful program that just, you know, it put all the numbers for me. And I was like, this is great. But I've never actually built a character using pen and paper. So... Uh, first rule of building a character is one, you need a pencil because you're going to make mistakes a lot. Um, and two is you should also have a notepad handy to write yourself some notes. As you can see, I have such lovely handwriting. Um, oh my bad, <laughs> is it not in the shot properly? Okay. Again, lovely handwriting. Um, so yeah, pencil. Pad, a pad of extra paper for notes and uh, your lovely character sheet that's always that's all been printed out. Um, I don't know what I'm going to build. This is going to be great fun. Um, so I should do a random roll generator and find you a character? No, I was going to roll oh. it myself. Okay. So we have here the player's handbook, which is very helpful. And you should already have, you should at least have this or a copy of it somewhere. Um, or borrow a friend's copy. Uh, libraries are a great thing, too, um, in order to start building your character. Um, if you don't have a character in mind of that you want to play, that's fine. Um, literally, pages 12 and 13 will give you the most, of, the most information that you're going to need, um, meaning ability score points, uh, ability score modifiers, um, and basically your ability score summaries as well, i.e. what each thing does. So, um, as you can see on our sheet, we have our six main scores. You have strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. So, um, strength, obviously this should be, sl you know, slightly self-explanatory. Uh, it's your nat natural athleticism, your bodily power. How strong you are. Uh, dexterity is your physical agility, your reflexes, how fast you are, how um, how poised you are. Uh, constitution, uh, health, stamina, i.e. hit points. So uh, can your character take a hit? Intelligence. Uh, this is mental acuity, ability to recall information and your analytical skills. Um and then you have wisdom, which is your awareness, your institution, and your insight. These two things are not necessarily mutually exclusive. You can have a character with a low intelligence score, but a high wisdom score. And you can also flip those around. You can have a character with high intelligence, but low wisdom. Um, and then, of course, last but not least, charisma. The thing that lets you charm the pants off of everyone and anything. You want to seduce that table in the corner? Go for it. Roll your charisma. Um, obviously, some of these are, depending on the character that you want to build, are more important than others. Um, like, a barbarian doesn't necessarily need to have a high intelligence or wisdom, but they may want to. It's all up to you. Um, uh, the book also does detail, you know, which race will, will have a natural ability score increase based on these items that you choose. So, um, let's, for the fun of it, we're just gonna do this randomly. 
So since we have six ability scores, um, and there's a race that's sort of associated with each ability score, we're gonna roll a d6 and uh, figure out which one we're gonna figure out which uh, score we're gonna increase first, and that'll help us figure out what race we're gonna play. This is gonna be great fun. That's a four. So going down, that's intelligence. All right. So we have an option between a high elf, a tiefling, a gnome, and a human. So we're gonna roll our d4 figure out which one we're gonna play. High Elf is one, Gnome is two, Tiefling is three, Human is four. We're playing a Gnome. All right there, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that on my character sheet. In pen, by the way, because this isn't gonna change. We're playing a Gnome. While the stream is going, guys, um, if you have any name suggestions, uh, go ahead and start throwing them out there, because uh, I'm not going to have enough brain power to think about this. We have so far intelligences for suckers. Intelligences for suckers? Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah, intelligences for suckers! Alright. Who needs to think? Whatever! I don't! Ham still doesn't. Alright. So, <laughs> Kamala doesn't need intelligence either! <laughs> Alright, so. On our sheet here, we are playing a gnome. So we automatically get a bonus plus two to intelligence. By the way, I don't know if you can see that, but INT is the abbreviation for intelligence. And let's see, what else do you get a bonus in? No, 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 no. That's about it. Right now, it's just a plus two bonus to intelligence, which is fine. That's cool, too. Well, you might get something more if you have a subrace. Fair point. Yes, subraces are a thing. So. Let's find out in the player's handbook where the subraces are by going to the very front because we're super close to that. So, gnome is 32. That's dragon boards. We're not playing that. Wait, what? Did I read that wrong? Hold on. Low and roll on intelligence scores, guys, tonight. 35. My bad. Yeah, it's not alphabetical, which is dumb. No, it is alphabetical. I just can't read numbers. Okay. All right, so. Nierms. Yep. So, depending on which race you pick, um, the player's handbook will also detail um, further what bonuses you get. So right now, automatically, our intelligence score is plus two. Um, most gnomes are often good, so we're going to just for fun, be chaotic good. Intelligence is for suckers. Uh, gnomes are about between three and four feet tall. So we're going to be three and a half feet tall, because that's fun. Well, later on in the book, there's also a, a random tr a table you can roll on to determine height and other determining factors, physical factors. Fuck that. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we have options between a forest gnome, a rock gnome, and that's about it. Or a regular gnome, I guess, and we just don't get bonuses to things. Okay, so forest gnome, rock gnome. One and two for on the D4s or rock? I was going to do a D6 because that's way more fun. All right. Ooh, actually better get D20. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even's odds, actually. Okay. Uh, Carolyn, which one's gonna be even, which one's gonna be odd? Even is rock. Okay. Odd is forest. Everybody remember that. I'm not. We got a seven. Odd was, uh, forest? Rock. Nope. Yep. Okay. So we're gonna be a forest now. Woo! Making notes over here. Again, everybody, submit your name suggestions, because, uh, we're gonna need some. All right. As a forest gnome, we automatically get a plus one to our deck score. Dexterity, by the way. Um, sweet. We also know the. We are also a natural illusionist, which means we get to know the minor illusion cantrip.
which is based on intelligence. We're going to have to make a note of that. <clears throat> so unfortunately, while intelligence is for suckers, we're going to probably need some. Okay, and we also have the ability of speak with small beasts. Through the sounds and gestures, you can communicate simple ideas with small or smaller beasts. Forest gnomes love animals and often keep squirrels, badgers, rabbits, moles, woodpeckers, and other creatures as beloved pets. Guys, I think we're going to be a druid. Because why the hell not? Alright. Alright. Um, going back over to general gnome traits. Um, we're going to have advantage on all intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws against magic. Um, we're also going to be able to speak, read, and write common and gnomish. So. <clears throat> Stretching out my inner thighs by sitting like this. And Okay. Do do do. Oh, and apparently we can read dwarvish. Wow, whoops. I'm going to put it down there anyways. Any good name suggestions come in yet? Cool. You guys have time. It's going to be a little bit. It's kind of boring. Not going to lie. All right. So now that we have our race down, let's go pick our class. Which I'm pretty sure I decided was going to be a druid. But you know what? Because of reasons, we can roll for it. Okay, so we have a couple classes to choose from. We've got Barbarian, Bard, Cleric, Druid, Fighter, Monk, Paladin, Ranger, Rogue, Sorcerer, Warlock, and Wizard. Um, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, hey, 12! For funsies, we're going to roll a d20, and if it's, not a, if it's not a Druid, I'm probably going to ignore it. That's a four. The dice love me! I would just like to point out, so everybody can see that, that is a four. I rolled that. We're gonna be a druid. The dice have spoken. Alright, so that's page 64. I've also never played magic people, so this is gonna be great fun. <clears throat> Alright, creating a druid. So... This one of the things that's not going to change um, is going to be your hit points per level in this class. So, Druid! Yay! So, our hit dice is going to be 1d8 per Druid level. And at first level, we get plus, it's going to be 8 plus or whatever our constitution modifier is. And then at higher levels, it's 1d8 or 5 plus your constitution modifier. And depending on how your DM rolls, ha ha. Ha ha ha. When you level up, they will either let you roll a d8, um, and you add your con mod. Um, some DMs are, are merciful in that they will let you like re-roll if you get less than four or half of what your dice is. Some DMs are not, and will just say, ha ha ha, you take the whatever you roll. So it can suck, especially if you level up and you're rolling your HP, especially if you roll a one, which sucks. But depending on what kind of game you're running, 
Obviously, if you're in higher levels and you've been rolling ones the entire time you level up, that can uh, that can add for a very interesting uh, twist to the battles. So. All right. I am using a combination of both pen and pencil on this because some of this is not going to change. So we are a druid. At level one. Okay. So, uh, depending on what class you pick is also going to depend on the types of armor that you can equip as well. So for druids, we are proficient, going to be proficient in light armor, medium armor, shields, um, and it specifically says druids will not wear armor or use shields made of metal. Um, our weapons are going to be clubs, daggers, darts, javelins, maces, quarterstaffs, scimitars, sickles, slings, and spears. And our tools automatically are going to be a herbalism kit, and our saving throws are going to be intelligence and wisdom. So those are going to be important with the saving throws. Because I have built characters where I completely lowered the stats on the saving throws, and it screwed me over so much. Well, so if you have proficiency in something, um, it means that over time you have a natural bonus to that thing. Your butt touched the Xbox! Vroom vroom, fuckers! It's going to take off! For the back one. <laughs> um... So as you increase, or as you start with a level, your starting proficiency bonus, I believe, is a plus two. So because you are better at this thing than other things, you have a, a natural bonus. So you get to add that into your saving throws if you're proficient in saving throws with intelligence or wisdom modifiers. So that's what it means to be proficient in something. Um, that also goes in with any of the... Um, with armor, it means that you can wear the items um, without taking penalties. Um, it means with um, uh, weapons that you get a proficiency bonus when attacking because you know how to use this weapon, you've trained with it. You are. I just want to get on camera. That's really weird that you were talking a lot. <laughs> on camera at all. Um, okay. Right. I suppose I could sit behind her. That's not weird at all. <laughs> not weird at all. <clears throat> I also didn't want to be like stuffing my face because <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> okay, so our proficiency bonus is automatically at first level going to be plus two. <laughs> and we are going to know two cantrips and two first level spells. A lot. So I'm sorry if you see me eating. I haven't eaten dinner yet. I'm hungry. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Cool. Uh, we can also be proficient in two in two skills, uh, meaning Arcana, Animal Handling, Insight, Medicine, Nature, Perception, Religion, and Survival. Um, for those. Ones. All right. Oh, that's not gonna work out. Well, we're gonna roll a d8. Let's see what happens. <laughs> well, that's an eight. Um. So we're gonna go with religion as one. Roll a d8 again. Let's see what happens. That's a four. So that's... Insight. Okay. Bye. So what I like to do when I'm picking proficiencies is obviously when you're creating a character, you're not creating it in a void most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a very interesting uh, scenario in that we're just rolling for the whatever it is we're getting. But... <clears throat> What I like to do when I'm picking the things that I'm proficient in with my characters is thinking about their background. If you've at least gotten that far with your characters, think about what it is they've done in their life. So if it makes sense for them to be proficient in religion or arcana, then obviously go with that. 
So you can use your character's backstory to help drive what it is, what it is you're good in as far as your character building is concerned. Okay. Do, 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 do. And this is why we always take notes because as you can sort of, I don't know if you can guys sort of see me do this, but I'm lifting up the paper constantly and going back to this just so I can see. Um, religion and insight. My saving throws are going to be intelligence and wisdom. Yeah. So. <laughs> At first level, there's not really much else that I need to be doing. Oh, wait. No, just kidding. I know the secret language of druids. Hold on. I forgot about that. Sorry if it's really quiet, guys. Uh... Oh, since we are a druid and we also are going to be casting spells too, uh, we have to know what our spell casting ability is. So the book will tell you um, our spell save DC and our spell attack modifier. So in this instance, this spell save DC is going to be 8 plus our proficiency bonus plus our wisdom mod. And this is something that the enemies would have to roll. So depending on if you're new to 5e or if you've played uh, earlier renditions, um, <clears throat> some of the earlier, um, the earlier uh, variations of D&D, &D, um, when you cast a spell at someone, there was a chance of hit or miss. The spells that require a save DC are typically AOEs. And so it's, I think that they kind of balance the playing field because if it's an AOE and you somehow manage to avoid it completely without taking any damage is kind of bullet, bullshit stuff. I'm sure we've, we've cussed on this channel before, so bullshit. <coughs> um, so the, the spell DCs are for AOEs and other attacks that would still affect you in some way, but you might resist the full effect. Okay, so that's all we need to know right now for uh, Druid, because everything else is going up into like level higher levels, and we don't really need to do that right now. So, we're going to flip back over to the main chapter, chapter one. We're going to go back and look at ability scores. Yay! Everyone loves ability scores. Okay, so um, one way to do it is you can do like a standard array. Um, basically, you have about, you have 27 points to spend on your ability scores. Um, the points are going to cost are in the, are on page 13 of the player's handbook down towards the very bottom. And they will tell you like how many um, points it's going to cost you to go up in that thing. Um, you can, one way of doing it is having a set of three high numbers and then three low numbers. So high numbers being 15 uh, and low number being eight. Um, basically everybody starts out at eight. So we're gonna go ahead and mark our character sheet with eight. And we're going to change this, obviously. Um, so, because we are a druid, and <laughs> our spell ca our saving throws are going to be in intelligence and wisdom, we need to have a pretty high intelligence and wisdom. So, I might just make this super easy on myself and just go 
15s in those two categories. I don't know if I want to go 15, though. But anyways, so regardless of which, we have 27 points to spend. So let's do this thing. So if I take something up to 15, bye. That takes away nine points for my total. So it's going to drop me down to 18 points. And then if I do something else in 15, that's going to drop me down to just nine points to spend across the board. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Since we're not going to be a hitty person, we don't necessarily need to have a high strength. Um, let the what champions. Now you can also go into the negatives on your ability scores as well. Um, that's not necessarily a great thing. Um, because if you do go up in your ability scores, that does give you a better modifier. So, for... I think for him, we are going to have definitely put, uh, nine, uh, fifth, we're going to knock our intelligence and <coughs> wisdom up to a 15. Which then also gives us an automatic plus two in each of these. So now we have a grand total of nine points left to spend. So I feel like I feel like this one would not necessarily be a very good a very charismatic person. So I'm going to leave their charisma alone. I definitely, I'm also big into like giving them health, so I think we're going to raise that up a bit. So if we take that up to a 12, that's going to take away four points. Leaving us with five, because math is hard, points left. So... I think I'm going to... I don't know why, I feel like they'd be really dexterous. So they're going to... We're going to knock their dex up to... Also a 12. Oh, sorry, whoops, I forgot. So since this is a 12, that's an automatic plus 1. This is a 12, that's an automatic plus 1. Um, and... Ah, you know it's great. We'll give him. We'll give him constitu better constitution. I don't know why I erased that. It's still a plus one. All right, so cool. That's all of our points spent. Woo! I don't know if you guys can see this or not. So right now we have eight strength, which is an ability modifier of plus zero. Dexterity of twelve, so it's an ability modifier of plus one. Constitution. A 13, that's a Billy modifier of plus one. Intelligence of 15, a Billy modifier of plus two. Wisdom, also 15 and a plus two. And a Charisma of eight. So maybe they're not going to charm the pants off of you, but by God, are they going to try and outsmart you? And eight oh. is a negative one. Eight is a negative one? We're yes. getting negative. So if you're. Oh, that's right, Durr. So the math behind getting your modifiers is you take whatever number you have, subtract 10, divide by two. So, 8 minus 10 is a negative 2, divide by 2 is negative 1. Um, <clears throat> My bad. But there is a chart also in the books that tells you those things, but if you ever wondered how they come about that, that is the math behind it. <clears throat> There's also two more ways that you can come up with um, ability scores um, when you're creating your characters. The first one is called the standard array, which is a set of numbers that you don't have to do anything with, they're just kind of there. In some regards, I think 
I don't know if this book mentions which one it goes with, but the one that I typically play with is 16, 14, 13, 12, 11, and 10. Um, and you can play with that uh, arra arrangement and arrange it however you want within your character sheet. The next ability or the next way you can do it is taking 4d6, roll said d6s, take the three highest of those numbers. So you can get a minimum <laughs> of three <laughs> and a maximum of 18. Um, if your DM is nice, they'll probably let you re-roll ones, but the other, the other reason why you roll four is so that if you do get a crappy number, hopefully the other dice makes up for it. So those are two other ways that you can come up with ability scores, um, and you can have fun with it. Okay, so the next thing I did was saving throws. So I, because of my ability scores here, that's going to factor into the saving throws that I have up here. So because I have like zero strength, because I'm not very strong, let's be real here, we have a negative one to that. Um, dexterity, we have a plus one. Constitution is a plus one. Because we are proficient in intelligence and wisdom, that is a plus four, because that's taking our proficiency bonus plus the bonus that's listed here. Not to throw you off your game, but did you also add in your racial bonuses to your stats? No, I didn't. Because why would I do that? <laughs> Is that's okay. probably going to change a couple of those scores there. That is going to change a couple of those scores. That's why, you write down. that's why you write things down, kids. And don't do it in pen first. You do it in pencil. Okay, so that brings my dexterity up to a plateau. And my intelligence up to a... My intelligence mod up to a plateau. So the... The, the modifiers that you get are actually to your ability scores themselves. Whatever. <laughs> Again, this is why you do it in pencil. Plus one, plus four. Wait, are you sure about that? Yes. Okie doke. So I think it was a plus two to intelligence and a plus one to dex. Yeah, so does that go over here, or does that go in here? It in goes skills? in these, these... In so these here. Yeah, because your 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 race is is naturally more of this thing. Okay. So it, it impacts your ability scores. Which is going to impact your modifiers. Again, kids, this is why you write it in pencil first. Okay, so, and this is, again, also why you write things down. So, so it, mm, you're right there, buddy. It's the ability score itself. So you are at a, so your, your dexterity would go up to a 13. Okay. Which is still says a plus one, but. But then this goes up to a 16. Right. Which changes that to a plus three. Her, her, her. Ha ha! Ding! One day we'll get this right. Today's not that day. <laughs> well, we did get it right, so it is this day. Shh. <laughs> All right. So. Okay. Um. I am also going to do that later. So, um, and then these scores, these ones here, go in here, right? Or Yeah, so now you add, you take all the modifiers that you've done, mm -hmm. and you put them in your little blocks. All right. <clears throat> Dexterity is the plus one. Animal handling is a wisdom. Plus two arcana is a plus three. E. That's a negative one because we're not very athletic. Deception, that's also a negative one. History, that's a plus V. Insight, that's because we're trained in that. That's going to add our proficiency bonus. So that's a plus two with my plus. That, that's a plus four. Intimidation, we're not going to be very intimidating. Investigation, we're, we're actually, no, we're going to be pretty good at that. Use your plus, brains on that's that That's a plus one. three. <laughs> Medicine's a plus two. Nature is a plus three. Perception 
God, I can see things. Uh, Performance, that's a negative one. Persuasion, that's also a negative one. Religion, so that's a intelligence. So that's going to be a plus five right there. Side of hand. Oh, we make, maybe could knock, steal some things. That's one to our stealth. And for survival, that's how we've done. So that's going to be a plus two. Huzzah! Success. Alright. So. Woo! Oh, you know what? I forgot to look up our uh, movement speed. It would be 30 for me. No, this is a small creature? Yes. 25. Hold on. Ba, 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 ba. Let's just double check that. Yep, my walking speed's 25. That's. Well, actually, no, that's gonna go in pencil too, because that may change. Depending on his equipment. Okay. So, let's next do. HP! What did we say our HP was? D8 plus your con mod. Yep. Or 8 plus your con mod. For, for, I think first level it's D8 plus your con mod. Or 8 plus your con mod, sorry. <clears throat> Sounds fake, but okay. Yeah, it's 1D8 plus our con mod, so current hit points. 8 plus con mod, so that's a grand total of 9. I mean your first level. Yeah. <laughs> so, so great. Okay. Nine <coughs> is our is our uh, thing. All right, cool. So all this fun stuff that we wrote down too, we're gonna have to also put on our character sheet too. So, well, we'll do that later. I don't want to do it right now. Let's go pick out some armor for him or her. I say him. I don't know if it's a boy yet. I haven't decided. Do, do, do. Starting equipment, page 143, if you're following along. There is a table for starting wealth by class. Um, so, as a druid, you would get 2d4 plus 10, so let's find out how much money we have. Probably crap. That's a 2. 3, we have 13. God, we're so rich. For a first level character, that's actually pretty good. 13 gold. <laughs> All right. Considering that most things at like a bar are like a silver or a copper. We are so rich, y'all. So rich. Especially considering we're just coming out of the woods. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, based on the, again, based on the, uh, class that you picked is gonna basically determine what sort of armor you can wear. So, because we are a druid, uh, we are, we are allowed to wear light and medium armor. So, light armor being padded leather or studded leather. And then medium armor, uh, we are basically limited to, ch to high armor because as a druid, we do not wear metal. Uh, we are of the earth. We are a hippie. Um, so let's give him or her. Uh, we're going to have hide armor. We're going to write that over here in our equipment section. Which is really funny because he's not really good at hiding. Ha 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 ha. But I'm dish. Um, and your armor will determine your AC. So with hide armor, our armor class is 12 plus our dex modifier. So we have an armor class of 13. Alright, let's look at a weapon for him. I didn't write all of them down because that was too much to write down. So let's find our weapons first. Probably somewhere around the simple. Uh, I think most most 
Ray classes. Um, yeah, we are we are looking at simple, basically almost simple melee and simple ranged, um, because I, from what I remember, they don't use any sort of metal. They are always like I think it was like club snap dagger, me. possibly just quarter snap staff. In the face with this thing. Hold on. Yeah, clubs, daggers, darts, javelins, maces, quarterstaffs, scimitars, sickles, slings, and spears. Try saying that 13 times fast. Uh, no. I don't know why specifically I said 13, but it did. It did. So. We will give them a quarterstaff and some darts. Because it's fun. Quarterstaffs also make Greg Lawton's walking sticks. We're going to note that over here on our equipment section. I'm going to give them 20 darts because I can. So if you're following along in the book, uh, we are on page 149 looking at the weapons. Um, so the quarterstaff does 1d6 bludgeoning. And it is a versatile weapon, uh, which then bumps it up to a 1d8. So the versatile Hey, meat. Carolyn, what's the difference between... What's the, what does a versatile weapon do? Uh, so a versatile <laughs> weapon is a weapon that you can use single-handedly or two-handedly. So single-handedly, uh, obviously, if like you were to take it and you whack somebody back and, you know, straight on like that, it doesn't have as much force as if you come on overhead and just slap somebody down in the face going two-handed. So that's what versatile means, is that you can use it single or double-handed. And typically, when you have a versatile weapon, using it double-handed gives you more damage. Okay, so I have them noted down here on my sheet. I have staff, and then staff with a V. The V is going to be for versatile, and then I also have my darts listed here. Um, your damage type will also be on the chart as well. So our quarter staff is going to be 1d6 bludgeoning. If we're heat wielding it one handed, I'm gonna mark bludgeoning with a B, and then if it's versatile, it's gonna be 1d8. And the darts are 1d4 piercing. And always try to keep up with what kind of damage your weapons do piercing, bludgeoning, pier uh, slashing. Um, and even when you get into magical spells, uh, fire, force, lightning, blah, blah, blah. And the reason why that is is that a lot of characters um, have or can have weaknesses or resistances to um, certain types of damage. For example, if you play a barbarian, when you rage, which is one of the features of a barbarian that makes them so fucking awesome, is that when they rage, they take half damage to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. So they can be a tank even though they wear no armor. And that, that's kind of the trade-off for being a character that is in the melee, taking all the blows, but it's like, fuck you and your cursed armor. I don't give a shit! <laughs> um, now, the darts are also um, versatile weapons, meaning they can be used one-handed or... or sorry, no, they are finesse weapons, my bad. Reading is hard. Uh, when you make an attack with a finesse weapon, you use your choice of your strength or dexterity modifier for the attack and damage rolls. Uh, I have to use the same modifier for both rolls. So um, we're going to use our dex so that attack bonus goes to a plus one. Um, now the darts also, because they have a range, they can be thrown uh, 20 feet or 60 feet. That's what's here in these parentheses is the 20 or in 60. Um, now the staff. Okay. Hey, Carolyn, how do I calculate my attack bonuses? Okay. <laughs> so your attack bonuses are going to be um, based off of what kind of weapon you're using. Okay. Typically, um, if you're using a melee weapon, um, mm -hmm. something that you have to be up close and personal with someone, that is going to be based off of your strength. So whatever your strength modifier is, um, and then you would also add your proficiency bonus if you are proficient in that weapon. Add those together, and then whatever you roll would be your um, attack Hey, Carolyn, how do you find out if you're proficient in something? Um, that would be in your class uh, feature at page. 
Um, typically, it'll tell you what you're proficient in as far as your weapons, armor, and also... Um, oh, the what else am I looking for? Uh, um, abilities that you can choose from, and also your uh, um, saving throws. Hey, because I'm proficient in the things that I chose, does that mean I get an attack bonus on these? I, Or at least I add my proficiency bonus to these? Yes. Okay, so... Since these are melee weapons, these are both in the cold strength. It's so sad. Uh, this is gonna be a <laughs> you said game. you didn't need strength. Oh, I <laughs> did said I didn't need strength, and I don't, I say, as I'm over here not doing anything with strength. <laughs> Intelligence is for losers. Um, well, we're super nerdy. Okay, so the next thing that we need to pick out is going to be our cantrips and spells. So we know two cantrips... And two first level spells. Uh. So with spell casting, um, if you are following along in the book, whenever you're in your racial, not your racial, your class page mini booklet thing that's within the book, there's typically a chart, and it will tell you what your proficiency bonus is for your level. Um, if there's anything specific that you have number of... Uh, um, Spell slots, um, how many rages you get per day for barbarians, um, what your sneak attack die changes to if you're a rogue, um, things like that. So those, there is a handy chart that you can always reference. Um, if you have the ability to photocopy or print out a copy of that chart and keep with you, um, I would highly suggest it when you're playing your character. That way you always have it as a reference. All right, so cantrips are basically stuff that you can freely cast um, pretty much no matter what. Um, first level spells, you only have so many slots a day that you can use before you have to complete a long rest before you get those slots back. Um, so... Now we have to pick our spells! Um, again, if you're following along in the book, we are at page 208 for druid spells. Um, it basically lists every single druid spell that I could possibly want. Um, and we are focusing on cantrips, which are technically level zero spells and first level spells. So we're also going to flip pages on our character sheet and go to the very last page. So this is again where our notes come in handy. Um, so spell slots for first level spells, we have two. Right now. Um, our spellcasting ability, we are basing it on... What did I say it was? Is it intelligence? Yeah. Yes. Intelligence or wisdom. We're going to do it as based on what's higher. Typically, it doesn't give you the choice. Make sure it's not mm -hmm. Well, hold on. We're gonna go flip back over to the druid book. The druid page. And if you do have a physical copy of the player's handbook, um, having bookmarks is super handy. Um, my particular bookmark, or my particular handbook, I have little tabs off the side that have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, because there are so many gosh darn spells that it's really hard to be like, let me find this mi minor image spell. So I have it alphabetized so that I can just flip to that M section and be like, oh, it's here. Um, so if you want to do something like that for your player's handbook to make it much more accessible than having to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, I highly suggest it. Um, I should say. Doing on the da, 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 preparing and casting spells, spell casting ability here. It is spell save DC D eight plus your proficiency. Dur plus your we wrote wisdom. this down. We did write this down. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. <laughs> My brain is not functioning real well tonight. It's fine. So yeah, spell save is. Spell save is 8 plus my proficiency mod plus my wisdom mod. Spell attack is my proficiency bonus plus my wisdom mod. So. Wisdom mod is your uh, ability score that you base it off of. Yeah. Which I think it does have on the top of the sheet. The third one. It does. I'm just mm -hmm. trying to figure out what that is. Ah. Theo. Spellcasting ability. 
So right now it's proficiency bonus, which is a plus two, plus my wisdom mod, which is a plus two. So that's spellcasting ability is a plus four. Spell save DC is eight, plus my proficiency mod, which is two, for a ten, plus my wisdom mod, which is twelve. So that's regardless. So like if you were no, to wait. cast fireball, um, and it says roll a dex, uh, it has a dex save, regardless of who's casting it, um, it would be based off your ability. So your the person would have to roll a twelve or higher based on your abilities and your spells to save against that spell. Whereas let's say there's a higher level druid who casts the same spell, they may have a better wisdom than you. So the spell doesn't necessarily change. The only thing that changes is the person who's casting it. So because they have a higher wisdom, they are more potent in their magic, the spell DC for the, for the next or the other druid, let's say is a 15, makes it a little harder for them to save. I might go back and modify some of these. No, we're not. We're going to leave it as it is. <laughs> We've erased enough as it is today. All right, so now I need to pick... I need to pick McCantrips and my first level spells. So, let's and find out. So while she's perusing, mm -hmm. um, depending on what, if, you're do, if you are playing a spellcaster, something to be very aware of when you are picking your spells is um, whether or not you know a finite number of spells versus... Um, if you, like, I think it's like clerics, possibly even wizards, you know all the spells, or you have access to all the spells, but you have to prepare spells each day, which basically goes sit, basically has you going in and going, okay, I know this spell, this spell, this spell, this spell, and this spell. These are the spells that I can cast within a 24 hour period before I take a long rest. So it, it, it limits your abilities and also makes, especially if you're like preparing to go on a mission with your party, thinking about what it is you think you're going to encounter, trying to prepare and have the best spells. If you're going to be in a seafaring environment for druids, they have the ability to um, control water. That might be a great spell for you to prepare or to know during the day. Um, for, for clerics, um, revivify might not be something you prepared that day because you didn't anticipate anybody dying. Um, who anticipates death? Who anticipated <laughs> that kraken coming off the middle of the sea to attack all of us? Whatever. Um, but that's that's part of being a spellcaster is is knowing that there there are specific rules for each spell spell casting group, um, and even uh, classes that you don't even think would be spellcasters, such as rangers. Um, rangers can have access and do have access to a small array of spells. Tieflings, uh, not tieflings, I mean tieflings, but... <laughs> tieflings, um, but not tieflings, but tieflings. <laughs> warlocks is what I mean. I always pair warlocks and tieflings, so I always get them like, they're the same! Um, so warlocks um, have a very limited number of spells, but they're different in that they have what are known as evocations specific to warlocks. It gets confusing. Um, I'm trying to think... Wizards are fun and adventurous because they can know spells based on how many, based on their own intelligence, and they have those spells in the spell book. But let's say you're wandering around the magical wilderness and you come across a spell scroll, that wizard could actually take that spell scroll with the right components and the right magical um, material. He can actually copy that spell down into his spell book and have access to that spell forever and ever and always. Spell scrolls are actually a one-time use, but because he puts it in his spell scroll or in his spell book, he now has access to it all the time. So, all sorts of fun different rules for spellcasters. Um, I think 5e really did a great job of combining some of the better elements of 4e and also the better elements of 3.5. Um, which I think, I know a lot of people hate 4.0 and are like, blasphemy! Um, but in 4, 4E, if you've never played it, um, 
what they did is they gave characters as you leveled up, regardless if you were a magic user or a physical class, you had abilities that were very set to that class, whether for dailies, that they called uh, at wills, dailies, encounters, and utility powers. Um, and what I like about 5e is that as you go forward in, in your class, you gain access to new abilities, but it's not they're compounding and they continually grow as opposed to 4E where it was a limited number of things that you could do and you were constantly changing them. So I'm going to move like this so that you have stretch. No. Bye stuff. Ow. Ow. Yeah, it was my wrist. I mean, ankle that popped. <laughs> I know anatomy. <laughs> Anatomy's hard. Rolling low at our intelligence scores today, man. Oh, yeah. All right, so is that a thing I get automatically or not? What? Um, Druidcraft. Mm. I don't think I get it automatically. I think I have to pick it. Which I mean, fine, you do that. Yeah, unless it specifically says that you get that cantrip on the, on your um, you get that cantrip, you have to pick it. The only one I think you get is, what was it, Minor Illusion for yeah. your... Yeah, Minor um, Illusion's my only one that I got, which I've noted here on my character sheet, because I'm so great. Because you're a gnome! I'm so short. All right, uh, Druidcraft. That's stupid. Hmm. I say stupid. Um, you create a... T uh, so Druidcraft is a, um, uh... You create a tiny, harmless sensory effect that predicts what the weather will be at your location for the next 24 hours. Um, the effect might manifest as a golden orb for clear skies, a cloud for rain, or falling snowflakes for snow, and so on. Uh, you instantaneously make a flower blossom, a seed pod open, or a leaf bud bloom. You create an instantaneous harmless sensory effect such as falling leaves, a puff of wind, the sound of a small animal or the faint odor of a skunk. Uh, you can instantaneously light or snuff out a candle, a torch, or a small campfire. That's one of the effects that I can do. Mm -hmm. I can either make all the freaking flowers bloom. Sorry, I can make a singular flower bloom. I can create the smell of a skunk, or I can light our candles. Well, if you could do it in a in a large in a large uh, version of creating blooms, I think that's actually a different spell entirely. <laughs> well, that's silly. Okay, I don't want that one. I don't remember the name of the spell, but there is a druid. There what is, is a for specific for druid spell where you can literally uh, make the the ground or the surrounding area fertile again, so you can encourage uh, plant growth. Um, I'm gonna be a super hippie. Basically, basically. <clears throat> What is it? Uh, poison spray. That's what I was looking for. Polymorph. Nope. I'm not allowed to have that. That is a high level spell. That is, I think, a third level spell? Fourth. Oh, that was close. But yeah, droids can get pretty broken. They have a wide variety of spells that they can uh, have access to. All right, I'm going to put down Poison Spray, uh, despite the fact that I can't find it right now in the book. So this is lame. All right, and i got to pick one more cantrip. Which might be Thorn Whip, because why not? Hmm? Thorn Whip. I mean, that one, yeah. Oh, psh, ow, it hurts. <laughs> Good! Ha ha ha! La 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 la. Spider climb. Wait, what was that other one? Shaleg. What is Shaleg do? I think it's similar to like prestidigitation and um. and thaumaturgy. With the wood of a club or quarterstaff you are holding imbued with nature's power. Uh, for the duration, you can use your spellcasting ability in s instead of strength for the attack rolls. Cool. The weapon also becomes magical if it isn't already. Okay, you know what? Okay. I think I'm going to take that. Never mind. I was wrong. It is not anything like prestidigitation or, uh, <laughs> horse thaumaturgy. 
And see, cantrips are very minor attack spells, and um, <laughs> I'll typically... I'll beat you with my magical staff! And typically buffs. Lots of buffing. Buff, 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 Let's just repeat that repeatedly. It's fine, right? That's how we buff! Buff! Um, well, how do you figure out your initiative? Is that always zero? No. Okay. Initiative is based off of your decks. Okay, good. I have to look <laughs> at my decks. I had to look at that. That's awful. Yep. Um, so dexterity is typically... J- er, dexterity. Your initiative is typically just based off of your dexterity. Um, if you have um, any... There are features, Mm -hmm. feats, as they are shortened down to, that you can get later on as you level. Um, One of them is called Improved Initiative, which I think allows you, like, gives you either advantage on the um, initiative roll, or it gives you a plus two. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. Mm -hmm. But it does give you a better initiative roll. Um, And if you don't know what initiative is, initiative is what you roll when you begin combat, which is how uh, the DM determines what order you're going to go in as you tick down the line. Um, for D&D combat, you, uh, a round, which is the time it takes for all of the people in combat to go, takes six seconds. So, one minute is, uh, ten rounds in combat. Um, so that's just an idea of how fast combat goes. So, if something lasts for two rounds in D&D, which typically takes, like, half an hour, <laughs> yes. it's only lasted actually, like, 12 seconds. Well, it feels like it went a really long time. It did not. <laughs> no, because we murdered the fuck out of that manicore. Two rounds, man. I have also forgot. Uh, yeah. You need to make sure that you need to pick out your background as well, because that will give you additional modifiers. Um, mm-hmm. So, as a hermit, which dru- most druids are, um, I am also proficient in medicine and religion. Wait, then I'm like double... Double wing. Okay, so in that regard, is if I were if if this were a character that was playing in my game, mm-hmm. um, I would allow you to go back and pick maybe another um, uh, item or uh, ability from your um, racial not racial class feature list mm-hmm. that you could pick from again. Some DMs might not let you do it. It's just that you're proficient in it. Congratulations. Deal with it. Deal with it. Um, but it really depends on your DM. Talk to your DM when you're creating your character. Um, I'm a rather benevolent DM, and I'm like, yes, give yourself all of the buffs. So. <laughs> Why, I thank you. I think I will give myself all of the buffs. What was I doing? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Was I looking at my class or my race? Uh, for what? Uh, my next proficiency bonus. I would be your class. I forgot what I was doing, um... Where's no work well tonight? I mean, you could do survival. I feel like that might be a nature-y kind of... Um, I almost think I might want to do Archon, maybe? That too, you could do that. Archon, maybe, yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've already got a plus two in that. You've already got a... You know what? I think we will take survival. Because we are a druid. We need to live in the woods. <laughs> You're right over there, bud. Yep. All right. Doing great. Cool. Don't die on me. Nope. No dying. Cool. All right. So we have modified our character sheet a little bit. So we are now proficient in insight, medicine, religion, and survival. And remember, we're pulling our numbers from both here and our proficiency bonus. Um. All right. Cool. So I've got my nine hit points, my thirteen armor class. My 1d8 hit dice, and uh, we're ready to take on the world. Our 13 gold. Um, the only thing I am leaving blank right now is personality traits. Um, so, personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. Um, because I haven't really fleshed out this character very, very well since we're sort of rolling with it, um, I'm going to leave those blank for right now. How are we doing on time here, producer, director? We are at 9.05. 9.05, yeah. We're going to leave those blank for now, um, but that's something that you can either roll for in the book and use their suggestions, um, or you can come up with those on your own. Um, that's completely up to you. Um, talk with your DM, obviously. Um, I know with Brigitte, she has um, some ideals, bonds, and flaws that were not necessarily in the book, Um 
So Carolyn and I talked that out, and she was okay with some of the ones that I picked. So that's what we picked. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna call it you need done. Name. No. Name no name. Oh names, yes. What are we gonna call our druid? Did we get any suggestions? No. Cool. So there's an awesome website that I like to use um, called mm-hmm. Behind the Name. Um, it is literally behindthename.com. Uh, that's how I usually come up with my characters' names. Um, for this one, though, I don't know how we're going to do it. Fantasy name generator? I could use fantasy name generator, but I like behind the name way better. Name. Um, I think, is it the player? Renamer. Um, depending on what kind of, I mean, there are plenty of fantasy name generators. Ah, there we go. Over the internet. Found their name. All right. Their name is Barak. Barak. Obama? <laughs> no. No. I mean... Because Barack Obama would be a completely different, you know, class and race. But this is going to be Barack. What would Barack... What would Obama actually be? A bard. That's what I was thinking. Fucking bard. He, he is great with the words. He has a really nice voice, too. It yes. is a very soothing voice. Anyways. So... <clears throat> Thanks for coming along the ride and creating uh, Barak with me, uh, who didn't get his name until the very end. Um, But if you guys do have any questions for, uh, you know, for us, please do feel free to submit them either through Twitch, Tumblr, or Twitter, or Instagram, because we are on all three channels. We are on all four mediums, obviously. Um, Everything we're roll for trouble. It's all spelled out. Um, Do we know what we're going to do next week? No. To be determined, because I don't know. I have a list of things. I'll just pull from one of those. It's going to be a surprise. It's going to be great. So, um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, um, I know this week's session was kind of boring, but, you know, very helpful. As somebody who has literally never built a character using pen and paper before, it's very helpful. Um, So, yeah, we'll see you guys next week at 8 o'clock. And... Same bat time, same bat channel. And then our next game is scheduled for when? I forgot. Not mm-hmm. this Saturday, but the, the weekend following after. Saturday. So Saturday the 16th. 16th. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, anyways, it's been great fun seeing everybody. So good night. Hope this has been very helpful. Bye. Awkward hand waving. <laughs>